such an amazing experience. Um, when you're going through such a loss, um, going home sometimes is really hard. Going to school when other kids don't understand can be really hard. And, and just going through every day can be just a really uh, like a hard time. And so the Lighthouse offers such a, a safe home for someone to go and be with other kids who are going through the same thing. Uh, kind of be yourself, but also talk about your loss um, openly in conversation. And, and people really can listen to you and understand and, and help you through the time that you're going through. We started very, very small and we were in church hall basements and elderly residents shuffleboard rooms and we had one consistent group of 12 kids um, and we had a group of very, very solid volunteers and an incredibly hard-working board. You definitely have to get the feelings out. You have to express them. You have to talk about your sadness. You have to get out your anger, your guilt sometimes. Um, what we'd like them to do within the sessions is to not only express their feelings and thoughts, but also we want to help them figure out a way that they can go on and move forward living a full and happy life without this very important person in their life. We try and help children and teens do that. We want to help them feel safe here so that they can't get all these feelings and these thoughts out that uh, pertain to the death of an immediate family member. Um, sometimes they do it verbally, sometimes they do it um, on the paper or through some other art medium, and other times they do it through their play. Okay, three minutes guys! We try and provide them with all those different media in order to get out their feelings. We've always had that vision, um, and that is to be a grief resource centre, really, for children and youth and their caregivers within the Halton and Summer Peel region. I think that just like, you can kind of just be yourself. Like, it's like, you can be like, I had the worst week ever, and like, I'm so sad with this, and I'm so angry, and like, I'm so frustrated. But I think the people who you're with, they're like, they like get, they get it. Yeah. Like, that, like you can be as mad as you want, you don't have to hide it. Like you can be as mad or as happy as, or like hysterical as you want, you can just go like hog wild and like, <laughs> just go nuts and like people understand it. And, you know, it's, it's great because you don't have to reserve yourself. Yeah. You don't have to hold back. It's important to know that it's here, that there's people that are going through the same thing that you're going through. And um, anything that can help. I mean, you always say you want to get back to the normal, but when you come here and you talk to people, you realize that it's just a different normal. Mm -hmm. And that's what you got to get used to. It's a, it's a real event that's occurred in their life. So with the little kids, it's, um, they're having times where they've wanted to kind of go off into almost a fantasy that they develop around the loss, around the death. And we, one of the things we do for them is help them to really keep it rooted in their day-to-day -day life and to create a relationship in their mind with the person who died that is based on actual facts. Because sometimes the little ones want to you know, make dad out to have been a superhero or something. Um, well, he had something wrong with his heart. So then I guess it just stopped when he jumped into the water. So then he couldn't, he couldn't breathe or swim up to, the, to get air, so he drowned. Actually today, well tomorrow, we're going to the cemetery to see my mom, my nana, and my grandpa. They're all in one place beside each other. My aunt Julie was really sad when mommy and my grandpa died. Yeah. I think it's important to note that for um, over the time that the Lighthouse program has been in place, we've found that children return, they grow up and they return to become volunteers. Um, which I think speaks really well to their experience in the program, but also what they can offer the new families coming in. 
Yeah, I went to the lighthouse uh, as a kid for about a year and a half or two years, and then I was ready to kind of move on. Uh, but then a year later, I just I thought of the, the lighthouse, and it had just been such a help for me and such a great time of grieving and stuff. And so I really found that I wanted to get involved again. And so I found Jo, and uh, she offered me a position as a volunteer. And um, I, I get to work with kids that are going through the same thing that I went through, and I try to help them as much as I can. But, but my sister, but when me and my friends used to have fights, my sister would say, don't, don't hurt sissy. Don't hurt sissy. And it would be really glad for me because I have somebody who takes care of me too. But now I'll have, but now like I have great friends, but I come home, sit down, and I just feel lonely. But I have a great dog, great family. But you miss your sister. Yeah, a lot. What kind of things did you do together? Um, well, I, I've always thought that she saw the, the pain that we were in, and she didn't want to unload more pain on us. So it gave her a safe place uh, and a new pair of ears to listen to her, uh, the things that she was feeling. Um, and, it, and it did help her tremendously. They had this balloon ceremony at the end of the year where they uh, tie a note to a helium balloon and they, you know, they send it up. And even though we weren't part of the lighthouse, Danielle said to me, Daddy, can we do it? And this was like two years after she's left the lighthouse. So we went out to a park. <clears throat> we went out to a park, and Danielle wrote Nicole a letter. I don't know what was in it. Suzanne doesn't know what was in it, but it was between her and her sister. So it's kind of nice that, you know, even though she's left, she still keeps ways of, of dealing with the grief uh, with her. Well, I can't, I can't really say enough good things about the lighthouse. It, uh, of course, when I made the call, I was thinking about Augustus. It's the lighthouse program for grieving children, and my priority was Augustus. I really felt that I had dealt with a lot of my grief. So as, as wonderful as it's been for him, it's been an incredible experience for me to be part of this group. I found another family. I was like, um, I found that I could talk to these people a lot easier. It was, um, it was good to know that some people were not feeling the same grief, but another form of the same grief. So they could, like what they were feeling, I kind of understood and could help them deal with some of the things that they were going through. And the same for me. Well, I can tell you as a parent who's lost a child back in 2000, we lost our 15-year-old daughter, Vanessa, to a prescription drug. Sometimes you think you're going out of your mind with grief because the thoughts that run through your mind or the emotions that hit you sort of ad hoc are very, very confusing. And I can imagine for a child, that would be like sort of living in a bad dream. So yes, they need help. And, and as an adult, when you talk to someone else who's in a similar position, lost a loved one, you realize you're not going crazy. Everybody grieves differently. So for a child, that would be even more important, of course. We definitely can continue to grow, and I, I feel that we need to grow. Research um, has indicated that there are over 350 newly grieving children and teens in the Halton and Peel area every year. So definitely the need is there for us to grow and to provide peer support to more children and teens than we are now. This last year we had 21 volunteer facilitators in groups, which was an all-time high. But in order to continue growth, we need to double that. So definitely we need help from the community right now.